Yes, good afternoon for the students of Kumar College of Technology, Kapitro. Today, I am going to deliver a lecture on the bending stress on beam. Before that, you know the pure bending theory equations. That is, the moment of resistance of the section divided by the moment of inertia about the nuclear axis should be equal to the bending stress at any fiber distance from the nuclear axis to the fiber distance from the nuclear axis is equal to the x modulus of the beam material to the radius of curvature. So that can be given by the equation, pure bending equation of m by i is equal to sigma y by is equal to e by r. So that is a very well known equation that is applied for two point flow where there is no shear force is applied, you will get only the bending moment distribution on a beam section. So in the case of only the pure bending moment is there, you will get only the bending stress, not the shear stress. But purely speaking, in actual practice, you will get both shear stress and the bending stress. So you have to design for the bending stress as well as for the shear stress equation. But for the equation of pure bending, Right, where there is no shear force is applied, you will get only the pure bending. So that is called as the pure bending equation. So I have explained so the each and every notation of the pure bending equation, where m is equal to the moment of resistance of the section above the nuclear axis or the maximum moment of the given beam section with the given loading. And I is the moment of inertia of the beam above the nuclear axis. That is about the horizontal centroidal axis, the x axis. Then sigma or f is equal to the bending stress at any given section from the nuclear axis. So we have seen, right, the diagram of a rectangular beam with a UDL on a beam span L and the UDL of W per meter over the entire span. You can see the cross section is a rectangular one I have taken. The width is B and width is D. If you see that this is vertical about the x axis, we can easily find the moment of inertia that is B B Q by Q1, where I is you can take it as right for a rectangle section it is B B Q by Q1. So that is the moment of inertia about the axis of the rectangle section. Now coming to the bending stress. Now the bending stress I call it as Fc or D sigma C or sigma. Right, where you can see the maximum bending stress in the case of the section will be taken at the outer and the bottom fibers, that is the top and bottom fiber. At the top fiber, I take it as sigma c or fc, at the bottom fiber, I take it as fp or sigma t. So, in the case of simply supported beam, you will get the bending stress, that is tensile stress at the bottom fiber, that's why I call it as sigma t or fp. Even you can put sigma t, here you can put sigma c. So you will get the upper stress at the top fiber, that is above the nuclear axis fiber. So it will be a right, linear variation like a right, triangle. So we can able to find either here bending stress at this section or at this section. Wherever it is required, you can easily take it. Even below the bottom of the nuclear axis also. So you can take it. That is, finally, the maximum bending stress will occur at the top and bottom fiber. So maximum tensile stress is sigma t or fd and maximum compressor is sigma c or fc. So out of the, which is a greater value, right, you can take that as a maximum bending stress. In the case of a symmetrical section, we are getting sigma c is equal to fc or sigma t is equal to fd because of the symmetrical section. If it is an unsymmetrical section, right, sigma c or sigma fd will be varying. You get the both value, you take the maximum for your design. Okay, then, so I have taken this simply supported section. So I have this in parallel to the section, you can take the section at a distance of say x from the left axis or the right support. So parallel to the section, for maximum mix, definitely it is occur at the maximum bending moment at the center of the V. So you can know that the maximum bending moment will be equal to so W L squared by A. So that is the moment of distance of the given V. Yeah. So wherever it is a 
I accept the name of Tatka, you can take for an unequal loading of the B. So that is possible. I will take a very simple case. So this will be the moment of resistance. Right? Then I, you know, moment of energy of the reflux is it is B D Q by 12. So once the section is given, you can take this value. So if it's a central section, I can be of 5 D per 4 by 64. If it is a square section, it is a into a cube by 12, that is a per 4 by 12. So that can be taken into account. Okay, after getting this value, you can take the first two equation. That is f by i is equal to f by y or sigma y by y. So you know the moment of resistance, you know the moment of inertia above the neutral axis, right? Fiber descent is known. Right, once the distance we have at the bottom or top, it is d by 2, d by 2. So the only unknown is the bending stress or sigma. So sigma or f can be determined at any section. So this is the general procedure adopted for the bending stress distribution. After the bending stress value can be determined, that can be taken into account in the case of design. Once the stress is known, we can be able to design the range of reinforcement that is main reinforcement and the dispensary can easily put it so that is the way okay we will continue the extension of the theory what we have seen to the numerical problem so determine the bending stress applied or developed in a beam which is of the 4 meter span with a UDL of 10 kN per meter for the entire cross section of the beam, for the entire span of the beam. And the cross section of the beam taken as 300 mm width and sorry, 400 mm width and 600 mm width. The angst modulus of the beam is 135 kN per square millimeter. So our aim is to find maximum bending stress, that is sigma c and sigma t. You know that. The bending stress at the top and bottom fiber, which is our compressive stress and tensile stress. So, due to for a simply support technique of symmetrical loading with the UDL. So, you take that the moment of resistance of the beam, or that is equal to maximum bending point. We know that the moment of resistance is equal to bending point, to maximum value that will occur at the center of the beam. So, that is value is WL square by A. So, that we have seen in the case of this shear force and bending point diagram for a simply supported beam. So I will take the value directly. Or you can draw the bending point diagram to take the maximum value. So because of a symmetrical section, the value is known as right, WL square by L. So W is 10 kN per meter, L is 4 meters, so L square, 4 square by L. If you are working out, the value comes about 20 kN meter. So that is equal to 20 into 10 power 6 Newton millimeter. So we know the moment of resistance that is equal to maximum bending moment. After that, the moment of resistance above the neutral axis is required. Moment of resistance above the neutral axis is IEXX. So that is the moment of inertia above the neutral axis. That is nothing but right? B DQ by 12. So B is 300 mm. And D is 600 mm, right? You are getting a value of 5400 into 10 power 6 millimeter to the power 4. So the maximum, right, moment of energy about the root class is 5400 into 10 power 6 millimeter to the power 4. After that, you know the maximum by distance occurs about the top or the bottom. So here y max is equal to right d by 2 d by 2. So that I have indicated that is d by 2 600 by 2 that is 300 mm and 300 mm at the top and bottom. So using that maximum fiber distance y max is equal to 600 by 2 that is 300 mm. Then next using the pure bending equation what I have told in the previous equation m by i is equal to f by y is equal to e by r. I will take the first two terms to find the sigma value or f value. So m by i is equal to sigma by y. Already I have explained what is sigma, y, m and i. Right? So we can take 
maximum fiber stress, bending stress at the top fiber, that is sigma C and sigma T at the bottom fiber. So both are equal because of a symmetrical loading and for a simply supported beam. So if it is a cantilever for the same section, the F T will be at the top and at the bottom we are getting F C. So it is a reversal of simply supported beam. So then the work out for these things. That is M by I is equal to sigma Y, sigma by Y or F by Y. So M you know already we have found out. I already have found out that sigma is the only unknown. So you can be able to determine. So you can rearrange the equation. Sigma T is equal to sigma C because both stress will be the same value, but the tensile and complex stress will occur. That is the nature of the stress is going to vary. So into y maximum we are rearranging it. So m by i into y max here yeah, because max will be the stress. So if you are calculating. Right, sigma t is equal to sigma c because of the cross section symmetrical. So you are getting the value of m is 20 into 10 power 6 divided by and i value we have got as 5400 into 10 power 6 into y max is 300. So both fibers are the same distance. That's why it is value is equal. Okay. So if you are working out, you are getting 1.11 into per square millimeter and the sigma t at the Right, bottom we are getting a tensile stress of 1.11 meters per millimeter. So sigma t is the tensile stress, sigma b is the compressive stress. So it will occur at the bottom and top fibers both. So separate the sigma t and sigma c can be written as the tensile and compressive, which is of magnitude 1.11 newton per square millimeter. So this is how we have to find the right stresses occurred on the beam. Similarly, you can find on any fiber distance, even for say this is 100 mm, you can put it. So that is m by i is equal to f by y. So instead of putting y max, you put the corresponding value of 100. So that is the only difference. So other values are going to remain. So this is how we have to determine the bending stresses at any fiber for a given beam loading and a span of the beam. Yes, thank you very much.